Hi, it's Hugh Foster here. Today I'm going to take you through one of my favourite pieces of music, Iambic Nine Poetry by Squarepusher. It's a great introduction to playing harmonics on the bass with its straightforward ascending bass line and a simple yet beautiful melody. For those who aren't familiar, Squarepusher is the stage name of Tom Jenkinson, a British electronic music producer and multi-instrumentalist who, well, one of his main instruments is bass guitar. This particular tune comes from his 2004 album Ultra Visitor, which I think the best way to describe that would be epic. Jenkinson himself describes it as a spectacle of beauty and of terror. <laughs> it is unknowable and will never be understood by anybody, least of all its creator. Cool, mate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, a pretty good summary of, of the, the places that album goes to. It combines a lot of very, very intense, aggressive, fast, essentially drum and bass with jazz harmony and virtuoso bass playing and just really, really uh, aggressive, intense sounds, you know, produced electronically. And then, you know, in, sometimes in the same song, it can even, you know, just go to something very beautiful and simple. And it blurs the line between live instrumentation and even live performance. You know, there's a bit, there's a bit of crowd noise here and there. I think he said that certain parts of it were captured during gigs as well. But then there's bits which, you know, I think uh, clearly uh, done in the studio later on. But yeah, you, you ne you're never sure where you are. I think that's part of the attraction of, of the album. Two thousand and four, when this particular album came out, I would have been sixteen, seventeen, and I think I'd heard a few of the other bits that he'd done up until that point. But yeah, hearing iambic nine poetry, I was like, oh, you can make those kind of sounds on the bass. It kind of blew my mind. The intro of this song is is essentially solo bass, really stripped back, a bit of reverb, a bit of delay, um, but yeah, clearly all played. Uh, at once it's a really really beautiful simple uh, progression and melody uh, anyway I've talked enough and presumably what you're here for is you want to learn how to play this little piece of music a good place to start would be harmonics themselves I'll do a very very short crash course in how to achieve them if you're totally totally new to them so here on the G on the first string of the bass if you go to the 12th fret and just yeah pluck and as quickly as you can take your finger away um, it does take some getting used to and this one as well actually you can all more or less keep your finger there and it'll still ring out just about but um, yeah there are other ones and we're not going to be using any of them on the 12th fret here we're going to be going from about here up to yeah, from the third fret to the ninth fret, that's the range we're covering. The next two, which are like easy to to play, to perform on the bass, are on the seventh fret and on the fifth fret. Okay? In each case, get as close as you can to the fret line without actually being on top of it. And I think that's the... Um, you're going to get the uh, strongest sound from those two there. Incidentally, the 7th fret on the 1st string produces the same note as the 5th fret on the next string. Okay, so 7th fret on the 1st string, 5th fret on the 2nd string. And likewise, all the way through. And that's actually a good method for tuning the bass. I'll just demonstrate. So, so you can hear that wobble and the less of a wobble there is between the two notes the more in tune they are with each other so that's a little um, incidental tip of you know there is a practical use to harmonics they're not just for showing off <laughs> the next two fourth fret which produces the major third of the string that it's on so in this case we're on G so the major third is B but you can you can produce the same note on the ninth fret 
that one will come in handy later. Okay, and then there are more, there are loads more, but I'm just going to show you one more, and that is, it's actually on the line, I'd say, between three and four. If you see it in tablature, it's going to be written sometimes as 3.2, and that produces that note there. It'll be the fifth of the string that it's on. So this one here, we're on G, so that will be a D. Bit trickier to produce that one, and I'm not always getting that one quite so well. That's a crash course in harmonics, and I've basically covered all of the frets that we're going to be using in this particular bass line, in this particular piece. So let's hear this piece really, really slow down. Three, four. Okay, yeah, a lot going on there, but um, yeah, it's not the trickiest harmonics piece in the world, you know. I think Portrait of Tracy is a real beast of burden for a lot of people. Uh, and, you know, unless you're Jacko Pistorius with his uh, double jointed thumbs, some of those stretches are going to be pretty tough. This one, a <laughs> little bit simpler, but I'd still say, you know, like a, a great piece of music to learn. And yeah, really good if you're just getting into harmonics. Let's start actually with the bass line that you're going to be playing all the way through with your thumb, okay? And you're just going up one note at a time, one tone at a time. All right, and the interesting thing here, actually, I'm going to point out, is that this is in the key of D major, right? Because that note keeps coming back, right? But the bass line never hits D. It's G, A, B, and C sharp. The, the, when you are playing an A, there we are. <laughs> when you are playing A, it could be thought of as D chord one over its fifth, over A, but there's never actually a D in the bass. And I think that's part of what makes this such an intriguing piece of music. Quite addictive to listen to because it never resolves. It never, it never hits. You know, it never hits D, it never like gets that resolution. Yeah, I think that's part of the beauty of this particular piece of music. Let's have a look at the harmonics on their own. Right, so the first harmonics that we play, we're playing the A and D strings together, fifth fret. So that produces uh, an A and a D, right? Um, that is actually tricky to play with the little finger and also play two at once. If you are struggling with that, you know, with the, with the root note as well, then just play the top of the two, just the, the D, okay? Right, so that's all you're playing, that first half of the first bar. Next phrase, let's hear that on its own without the root note. Okay, so four on the D, three, let's call it three, you know, um, on the D, five on the G, then back to four in the D. Okay, so, so far we've got fifth fret of the A and D together, and then four, three, five, four. Okay, and then next bar, we're playing seventh fret on the, on the, at the bottom, on the E string, and then fifth fret on the D, so, essentially outlining a B minor there. Okay, nice and simple. We don't do anything else uh, on that particular point of the sequence. And then this one's a little bit fiddly. So seventh fret on the D, seventh fret on the G, ninth fret on the A. Okay, and then we're back round to the beginning, well, 
the the next couple of bars of the sequence, which is essentially the same movement but with some variations. So the first part of that, again, G on the bass, A and D on the harmonics, and then okay, here we are going for um, third fret on the G, creating that high D, then fourth fret on the D, fifth fret on the G, back to fourth fret on the D. Okay, and then familiar territory again, fifth fret on the D, with the seventh fret on the E in the bass. So, okay, and then the last bit is just nice and simple. You're going, just raking down the seventh fret from G to A. And then once you've played those three, play an open E, no harmonic. Right, let's just go through the harmonics again on their own. So, A and D together, fourth fret on the D, third fret on the D, fifth fret on the G, back to the fourth fret on the D, fifth fret on the D, and then 7th fret on the D, 7th fret on the G, ninth fret on the A, then 5th fret on A and D together, 3rd fret on the G, 4th fret on the D, 5th fret on the G, back to 4th fret on the D, 5th fret on the D, and then right down 7th fret until you get from, well, from G to A, open E and that's whilst you know you're playing <laughs> bass notes underneath it uh. yeah the tricky thing as well is just anticipating where you need to be next and having the patience to hold those low notes for as long as you can and being like, okay, what's happening next? All right, second finger <laughs> on the A, third finger on the B. You've got a passing note there as well. But yeah, that basically covers it. enjoyed that and you'd like to get you know a transcription it's available for free on my website hughfoster.co.uk it's in a pdf in standard notation and tab i'm not always a fan of tab but i think for finding exactly how to play some of those harmonics if you're new to them it's very very useful there also i have a patreon if you'd like to support me you know help me create videos like this get bonus rewards like early access to videos downloads some other stuff, you know, I'm building it slowly. Please consider signing up to be a supporter. I really do appreciate the support. That's patreon.com forward slash Hugh Foster. I'm gonna leave you with a little bit of me noodling. <laughs> I'll put the uh, signal chain, the pedals I'm using and so on in, <laughs> in the description of this video because I know people always ask. That's it from me today. I'll see you guys next time.